So let's take a look, and we're just going to jump live into some scenarios and show you uh, a few use cases and tools throughout this story arc. First and foremost, maybe we've got our existing conditions. You know, I'm a surveyor, I have a surface, and I have to deliver to all my downstream users. A very common mistake that users make is they have one surface. Um, they assign that one surface for a survey, but what happens if survey, maybe even a subconsultant, a different company, comes back with additional data? Do we merge the two together? Do we augment two different organizations' data, uh, you know, by joining it all together? And uh, who's responsible for it when we do that? Well, we have tools. And we're going to take a look at the append tool and a trick that I call a null surface to allow us to pre-plan and forecast for an opportunity like that. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take a look here. Let me jump over. I'm going to bring my screen up for us, and we will start with that. Scott, just a quick check. Can you see my Open Roads designer? Yes, it looks Perfect. awesome. So, all right, guys. So here's the scenario we're dealing with. So maybe I'm the roadway design firm, and I've got a survey company that was doing this uh, effort on my project, and they sent me their survey. And it was a deliverable. Maybe we were not collaborating uh, using ProjectWise or, or another mechanism. And so here I was delivered a raw survey, and I can see the field book, and there's a terrain here. Well, the problem is if I deliver this terrain to my roadway users and some of my downstream disciplines, um, we would run into a problem that I know on this project there's going to be an additional survey from another company, perhaps over you know, to the southern portion of this project. And for that reason, if I send everybody to this terrain and they use it as an active surface, they may have to go back and change their active surface on their project. And how do we get two and one? Well, in this case, I don't know yet that this other survey company is going to come out. So in the real world, we would just be given this surface. Well, I want to plan ahead. I want to prepare for those instances. So one best practice that we encourage is to come through and create a trick I call a null terrain. And so what this really amounts to is here we can see the survey, and we've got a surface here for everyone's awareness. I'm hovering on that boundary. And simply what we're going to do is go ahead and create a brand new file. Now, I've already created a brand new file for today's purpose. Um, what we've done is just made a brand new file. I called mine existing Delta Terrain. And what this allows me to do is to prepare for the downstream. See, I need one terrain that my users can leverage that they can trust. And as it changes, those changes can propagate through. And as my business needs change, I can prepare them for that so they don't have to keep switching in and out terrains. So in this particular scenario, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to reference the survey. So I've created a delta terrain, and I'm going to reference this raw survey or maybe this addendum if that other survey company came with their information, and I'm going to attach it in. Now, for today's purpose, I'm going to use Coincident World and accept. And as we bring this in, it's a pretty simple process. We've, we've simply attached a reference file, nothing really unusual there. And just to show you it's a reference file, I'm going to use my right-click view control to uh, issue a command to adjust those colors. It'll dither back and be very dark. So it is in my reference, and I can see I can still hover and interact with it, understand it. And what I'm going to do is deliver a new terrain. I want a terrain that is going to be a second terrain. I don't have a second terrain on my project yet, but I want to prepare my downstream users to use a complex terrain. So would I just copy this terrain? Probably not advisable. Well, what I'll do for the time being is maybe take a look at some of our additional methods and terrain. And the create delta is used to kind of give us vertical differencing in many cases. Um, we can also control, you know, some of the the uh, the offsets as far as how it behaves between different methods. Well, what I'm going to do here is adjust the terrain model to a plane. Now, when I do this, it's going to ask me to select a terrain model. And before I do that, I'm going to assign my feature definition, of course. So in this one, why don't I just do existing boundary? Now, I've already dithered back the rest of my survey, and I'm going to actually call this EB null, just so I'm aware 
that this is really just kind of a placeholder. It's a null terrain. It's not really part of my downstream project's needs. But when I do this, I want to make sure that I don't have any irregularities in the surface. Just kind of sort of make a ruled copy of what's out there for right now. When I come over and select the terrain, we can see it's going to go through the heads up prompts and I'm going to left click to accept entering that plane. And there I've gone ahead and created a delta terrain. Now, if I go to look at the triangulation on here, I would see that the property information is going to deliver me the exact same quantity of triangles for both survey as well as this delta terrain. So just want everyone to take note that it's just one triangle short of 23,000 here on my properties dialog. They are identical. If I were to do this again and right click and choose the, uh, the actual survey one, so let me go ahead and do that. Now that I've got that one selected, you can see it's also 23, just one short of 23,000. So I've got my delta terrain created. I'm just using a, a technique, a trick, if you will, with the terrain commands that I have available, created a second file. It's a placeholder. But now let's talk about my roadway users, drainage users, and everyone downstream. Well, in this particular instance, I know rules and relationships, and I know how open roads propagates changes. So why don't we go take a look now and create a new existing complex terrain. I'm going to create a 3D file, and I've already done that for today, and I've given it the name existing complex terrain. This is what I'm going to share with Roadway. I may give them my base map and say, here's where my topo is, but I want your team to use my existing complex terrain for the surface. It's easier because it also allows them to kind of have a refined look at the surface. They don't have to worry about turning off any other features or levels. They just get the ground. But let's go attach both that raw survey that I know has the survey terrain and now this new null placeholder that I have called existing delta terrain. So I'll go ahead and open both of these up and accept the defaults, of course, for both. And here are my references. Now, I'm not worried about the display right now. What I'm worried about is the fact that I have two surfaces referenced and I need to capture a single source of truth. This is going to be the terrain I give to my roadway users. When I go up and use the additional methods, we'll be able to take advantage of create complex terrain. And because of the rules and relationships and the way civil data can be leveraged and understood through the reference, when I choose create complex terrain, we, in fact, automatically read both terrains. No selection needed. I'll be able to come in. Let's go use that job, one, two, three, four, five. That's actually quite important here. And then this EB null, well, should I merge it or append it? For today, it doesn't exactly matter. Um, in this particular instance, I can just append it, and it's just going to use the exact same points around the boundary on top of what's already there. So when I go ahead and add this one as well, I'm going to assign a feature definition. You know, it might be a good idea to get one that looks like triangles now. Maybe I want to describe that, and I'll call this my existing ground. And so I'll give it the name existing ground, very generic name, so that the roadway and others, this is what they should be looking for, communicate to that or that to them, and I'll go ahead and fit. Now, let's take a look at what I've actually done. And everybody remember there were 23, just short of 23,000 triangles. When I select the triangles here and I come over to those properties, I want you to see that the existing ground is built from both surfaces. And when I look at that surface more specifically, let's go ahead and do this again. Pick my triangle. Let me pin open my properties here for this. And I select that. Does everybody notice there's a few more triangles than there were? Well, that's only because the exterior points can't disappear for the null. So it puts, a, it puts points on top of points, raising my count. It has no effect to the interior of the surface whatsoever. So this is technically acceptable. Um, now, if I was doing work that was right up against the boundary, well, I might have to have a conversation about getting additional survey. But I want to make you aware that this technique gives us the ability to have a surface now that later, when the project changes, no matter how big or small, 
when my phone call comes in and I'm told, can you, you know, combine this project of we want you to extend another mile of survey and maybe I can't hire that other survey company. They've already given me one. Well, no big deal. I can come back to this complex terrain that my entire roadway team and others are using and I can take advantage of the ability to edit the complex terrain model down here. So if we take a look, we've got the ability now that it's a complex terrain model to simply come in, open the briefcase, add and reference any other terrain we want, and then remove that null placeholder. So a very fast tip trick in order to make sure that everyone has a single source of truth moving downstream. So that is one technique we want to encourage for existing terrains. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.